think that's something they're going to take into this first game, per se, but it's been a historically strong map for Tempest, actually. It is, but it is not the most common to see Tars of Doom first pick, especially coming out from Tempest. And this will be indeed a very big fight of the global, where Mighty actually used lots of the Haka sands on that the Haka game number one Sky Temple. They were using the globals perfectly to join into the team fight, have better positioning, and just bringing out that strong win from game number one. Let's see if they can make that work in Tars of Doom coming in, going into the draft very soon. That's so what we're gonna wait and see. I'm excited to see if. Sky Temple comes out because it did not really uh, come out the way we expected it yesterday. Um, no Probius either, so just waiting to see if Duck Duck is going to show some of his unique flex picks as our draft is being made, set up right now, getting that lobby ready. Of course, Tempest will be thinking in a way that they want to have something ready that they're preparing or experimenting with Towers of Doom and probably taking take a win and snowball that momentum into a Towers of Doom, not Towers of Doom, Sky Temple. Yeah, so and second the game. Keep in mind that they don't want to show what they want to use in the playoffs in this best of five. Mm -hmm. Or if they do, they certainly uh, want to hone it. And it's very unlikely they will play the series insanely try hard because of what's at stake and what their opponents will use to study them going Temp to the playoff rounds. Tempest still has one more match, but it is against Raven. So they can have some more experimentation against lower teams. Here's the Globals we talked about all the time, the Dahaka ban, which uh, will force Tempest to ban Zeratul, which will give Mighty the Falstad. So that is going to be the idea here for Mighty, almost certainly. There it is. Stormlord Falstad. Funny thing about Tempest and Mighty, their hero pool and the players that want to play Zeratul overlaps really well. So Tempest ended up just banning Zeratul instead because Sans, because Sans on that Zeratul just was just wrecking the back line and Void Prisoning just saw the perfect timing every single time yesterday. They saw it with their own eyes, so it's only been like 20 hours since they played here. Yeah, less than a day. So, for Mighty, I think you're definitely giving some consideration right now to uh, what you're going to do in terms of poke on the altars. And I think the Zebo is a strong pick here. It doesn't really give you an edge in the draft, unfortunately, but it's very likely to be banned by Tempest if they don't grab it. Other heroes to look for are the ETC, which we've been seeing a lot despite the changes. Seems like the Korean pros are actually even prioritizing him higher than he was before over Muradin. So probably gonna pick up one of those two and look for some poke. There's an Azebo as expected. It will be the Muradin. Very candy coordinated. It was a little bit more towards Morden because ETC will, ETC's Mosh will be already kind of soft and soft and hard countered by Leeming's Wave of Force. So I think that's why they try to went towards a little bit more Morden and then they can pick up the support. Maybe they will because they have more chances and all they need is some more, some more DPS and maybe even more tanking in the front line. And Tempest, they can go into support choke but there's not really a decent answer here. Yeah, I mean, I... They already have the global mouth. They took mouth, so maybe if they want to ban Lucia for the big rotations up and down. I think it would be uh, wise to ban something in the four-man rotation. Looks like they're looking towards the soul laner instead here, at least the initial soul laner in the Ragnaros. So... They don't want the uh, lane to be really strong for Mighty in the early game before Falstad goes up there when he gets seven. Mighty, I think a Tychus is a solid ban, or even a Sergeant Hammer to, to take out that siege potential I think by Fury Impair. I think it's really wise to ban... Ooh, I'm going to go for the ETC because they took the Murden. Yeah. I'm say it's really wise to ban the DPS. The problem, though, of banning one of the Tychus or the Hammers, the other will be available for Tempest. And... Sergeant Hammer is just so powerful at delaying. They have Malfurion and Li Ming. Sergeant Hammer has the ability to delay with Napalm after 10, which is just so infuriating. If you actually put it right on top of the altar, it basically just burns around it. No one can channel. It stays there for such a long time. So I think that's definitely what they're looking to grow, go towards here. They have seen Duck Duck play incredibly well, however, on the Tychus. And I wonder if they'll show us something unusual here. That's 
what they're probably thinking about right now because these two DPSs are the obvious choices to choose between, but mm -hmm. perhaps they have something special planned instead. And even without Murden is taken, ETC is gone, so any mobility tank warrior is kind of banned. Only other mobility hero I see is Anubarak, which they have played a few times. We saw Modern Life on being on Anubarak a few times. Gonna be Tychus and Tyrael. No surprise on the Tyrael considering the EDC ban. And he's gonna be their solo laner, which we already knew was likely to be the case because just so strong right now in the solo lane and can help win team fights. Boss control is somewhat of a factor on this map as well in the late game. So that's one more reason against the Falstad or already having the Ghost, that's a really big concern. We don't usually see boss uh, you know, fights and timings on this map because the boss is actually stronger on this map than on others. But it is something to keep in mind as we look now towards Mighty. Perhaps the Lucio for the faster rotation now will be the support choice. And they still don't have a strong solo laner for the pushing pu uh, pre Falstad having the split soak. I wonder who that's going to be. Because Ragnaros is removed, and that's kind of the problem here for Mighty. Or they can just leave the Ziva bot, toss that tap, and just rotate up and down. Artanis going to be the solo laner. There's very few other options. I mean, they could have really considered the Thrall, but so out of the meta right now. And for Tempest, question is now do they want another melee with this Tyrael? What sort of tank uh, they want to bring in? Would be amazing if they had Zeratul here, but alas, banned away. ETC, of course, that Senkmosh is a powerful combo, but ETC is already gone. Yeah. I think they have limited choices. It's a few, few of them are Arthas, and I think Anubarak fits pretty well here. Yeah, Anubarak. Because the Anub oh, it all Anubarak and Tyrael both, both are counter to mage, all the spells coming out from the Zebo and Falstad. Yeah, Anubarak is. I feel like the weaker choice when you compare it with the Arthas, but I think there's still a possibility here. His beetles can be really annoying to delay altars as well. Um, let's see, I think it's going to be the Arthas with its variant instead. So, or an unusual pick. We were expecting to see a few of these today, and variant is going to be the one. So, this is going to be... There's not a whole lot for Taunt to pair with, but obviously you can Taunt with uh, Li Ming. Yeah, just doing all that burst damage with Tychus to get the first kill, get that critical mass reset. The Artanis pick, I feel like, is also a really interesting one, but with how the draft went, there just wasn't other options for soul laning. It was like both teams have a solid draft, but the delay comp that Tempest has is so much stronger. Mighty has the global as we're going to game number one on Towers of Doom. In blue, it is Tempest, Hyde on Malfurion, DuckDuck on Tychus, Lockdown on Liming, Sign on Varian, and Modern Life on Tyrael. And in red, Mighty, Joker on Muradin, Sans on Artanis, Magi on Falstad, Nasang on Kerazim, SDE on the Zebo. I've never seen that in the Zebo spray before, actually. That's great. I am 100% going to use my shards to buy that one. <laughs> I want that. I may even already have it. Didn't even know. Right, but my loot box is really fast. We'll see. That space button helps you to open the sign, goes right in. Yep. Sans looking for the big swap. Unsuccessful. He's going to head it right up to the top lane. So it being a fairly even trade here. SDE is looking to scale in the late game, but his Nazebo has been very powerful. We talked about it yesterday, as he seems to be one of the better Nazebo players in terms of positioning, actually. And it's kind of a weird meta we live in where having the Zebo as one of your best, best heroes is kind of a thing to keep in mind, you know, because <laughs> he was so out of the meta for so long. We saw him a few times uh, back in Season 1 in 2015, but just been so rare uh, as a hero. But with the buffs and changes to the spiders, it's so common to see him used. And you have the experience that SDE does have on this hero when he suddenly pops into the meta. It's definitely a boon for your team. 
Sans actually didn't drop the swap out there. The swap. Interesting. I think it went a little bit too fast, and Tyrio is on line, so maybe it went below him for some reason. Well, it is actually an amateur opponent coming out from Arcanus. Well, we'll talk about Arcanus. Zebo is the first one to blow up. There's a the first kill going to Tempest. One of the ways to counter Zebo is to gank him because he has no escapes, and if you're spot on with your CCs, come in there, you get these kills. It can be very annoying to deal with. One of the reasons why that's a counter to Nazebo, not obviously just because you're trying to get the kills um, and he has no escape, but because you're limiting how much he can actually soak and get his stacks because he becomes tankier and tankier. He spends all his time in the Hall of Storms, or any time at all, that means he's getting his Widowmaker quest a lot slower and his Voodoo Ritual is just not building very quickly. So good target here for Tempest to pick on. And they've made that rotation worth it as we go into our first altar phase. Remember, Tempest has so much to delay with the grenade from Tychus, the missiles, and the moonfire from Malfurion. That's right. I think Even Aldruins. I think Mighty picked up Martanis to have that global rotation along with Falstead by taking the camp with the amateur opponent by himself a little bit quicker so that they will have the global lead level up and try to even it out if they're losing, try to soak up EXP and just wait for Nazebo to be level 20. Nice spider um, block there on the mercenary camp by Nazebo, preventing them from suiciding. It's actually pretty cool. Never seen that interaction before. SDE here just again positioned so well, doing so much damage in the back line, virtually untouched. Sans helping to put the peel and this is a scary situation now for Sign. Will get away as Sans looks like he still had his uh, swap on cooldown. He doesn't have a cooldown reduction for it yet. Nasong's gonna get the channel. This is gonna be a lead for Mighty with that kill onto Duck Duck. SD just a master of the hero. Tempest went in really deep to try to get him, but he was too safe. Amateur opponent, not only for clearing caps, but also good at helping push a wave like this. And they also have the global, so they are leading in EXP with those, with that kill. They also got one more core shot, and Tempest really has to catch up. They, this is a comp that they would love to fight. They love to fight, have Varian go right in, and Tyrael jump in along with Varian and try to get a kill. So Leaving would get that reset, and Malfurion just help his team to get some, get some CC down maybe to start the fight even. Joker is going in here on the lockdown. There's the swap. Lockdown's gonna take a ton of damage. She avoids the return, and Sans gets out, avoids the root, but still, Varian is going in on him. He does get away. That was actually a nice turnaround there for Tempest. Sans ba barely getting the shield for himself just yeah. to be safe at the end. That's all it took to save him. So it's an awkward exchange for Tempest because they didn't get anything back from it. They have caught up in EXP now. It's actually going to be Muradin who's soaking the top lane right now as Artanis had to go home after that scenario. <laughs> Took a lot of damage, got has to heal up and come back up here. It looks like they're going to take this opportunity with this lane pushed to take the cap. It's going to be done solo by Sans, as you mentioned. The amateur opponent makes, makes this a lot quicker, but Tempest is also getting their own cap down here to the left side. Dealing with it is going to be annoying, though, because there's not going to be anybody up there. It's probably going to get its uh, suicide off onto the bell tower as they rotate down. It's only Tyrael up there, but the longer he stays, the better chance Mighty has of getting this Bell Tower captured, or this altar, I should say. So Artanis is even going for follow through instead of the prison build. He's not really thinking about big swaps or double swap. Maybe he will go for that grab swap at 13. But it, it looks like he wants to get more damage, just be on the melee and the front line, try to do more damage, try to clear up the wave and camp a little bit quicker. ST just gonna push this. He's gotta be close to Widowmakers now. Probably like one more team fight will finish that for him. That's gonna be a huge power spike in terms of damage. First false that is away and Tempest does spot false that on top. Nice block on the storm bolt, but the spiders are still gonna cancel it. Sands is very far out as a result of this maneuver. She should have shield in just a moment. Dies before he can use it though. Duck Duck with that burst. Now Nasong is going to have to retreat. SD is going to do what he can here, counterwise. Nice parry there. Moggy is split pushing the entire time, which is why this is not terrible for Mighty. 
But I feel like that was just kind of the their backup plan, if you will, since this went so poorly for them in that fight. Sand's getting just too aggressive. So Modern Life wants to interrupt that fight. He will be unsuccessful. Mighty knew that they were going to give up. They ended up giving up at the end as they literally did, did not choose to bring Falstead in for the fight. They wanted to push the top lane because they know once they push that false wall, first wall, they can go towards it, have the pressure onto the bell tower, and then that's when they will also have the bigger pressure onto the rotation. Ooh, this looks like it might be a double. 10 was here first. Even the Avatar used. Yeah, he just barely got it, needed it to survive. Duck Duck getting jumped on here in this lane, but look at the quick rotation actually back to try to punish him. Both Modern Life and Moggy were like, ooh. It's actually Beam coming out from Artanis. Maybe he wants to snipe on that one target. Well, it's really annoying uh, as a Malfurion player when that's on you because sometimes it can force you to ice block. You're not able to use your abilities during that time. And you, you, either way, you're kind of forced back out of the fight. So you might not be in range to heal. Good parries again from Sign. Actually going to go ahead and commit to the taunt here, but there's no follow-up damage. The blind is really good against Artanis. Or sorry, um, against Tychus specifically. But I feel like the purification beam is still... I still think it's the better choice here. It's rare, obviously. But in this specific case, it's not going to do anything against Li Ming. Because the real source of damage is also going to be looking for that big critical mass reset into the calamity damage. The more I see about them, I don't think they want to fight. They just want to isolate, try to get picks maybe, and then just use the gust defensively all the time just to not fight and make sure Nazebo is safe and he can get that stacks for Violent Infection at 20, and then that's the, that's the time where they would start to fight. Yeah, SD just has to hit one auto on each minion here, and then he backs off. Nice juke by Modern Life. But Duck Duck is going to get this channel, and they commit, haunted. actually. They commit all the way in for the interrupt. And that's going to cost them their palm. That was close. Yeah. He was taunted and almost went down, but barely saved himself by self. That alt is very important if you guys do not use alt. Please use alt. It's a very good key. Alt key is pretty good. So this is a really interesting fight for Tampa. Sanctification actually used a little bit early. Still gonna get the kill here, but Joker is going in onto Lockdown at the back. He's not in a position to get Calamity damage, but drops out a second Disintegrate. It's gonna help finish off Falstad here. It's gonna be the double. Huge silence, so no Dwarf Toss available here for Joker, who will also go down. And Lockdown wants to carry this fight. One more Disintegrate. Looking for the pick on the Nasong. Is he gonna dive for it? He wants to. Doesn't have enough mana, and looks like that's gonna be the end of the team fight, but they did still get three kills, and Sign just taunting the right target at the perfect time, and taunt also. If you start the fight with Taunt, basically during the fight you can use it once more because the short down is just so short. So, it's going to be now Tempest with 13 is the advantage. And Falstad is just kind of back here clearing, not putting on the pressure he wants to. And Mighty has been losing each and every team fight. Their comp isn't fully scaled yet. They don't have Seasons Marksman to bleed. They don't have that file Infection. They don't have the cool direction for the spiders either. That's going to come much later. So you need to hold on and make sure that this game doesn't snowball against them and get out of hand. So far, it's been decent for them. Obviously, this map just kind of goes long based on its nature. I like this gang. That's definitely going to be good for them onto Modern Life. Didn't even need Joker's help. Down here, though, <laughs> it doesn't look like it's going so well. SDE will get picked. That's going to give Lockdown some more mobility here. We're going to get the double onto Sands. Magi does steal this temple at the same time, actually, and they're looking for the double. This is actually quite crafty by Mighty. They're going to get it. Nicely done at the very end of the day. It doesn't matter about the double if they get both altars. Well played. Yeah, well played. They lost two, but Joker just standing on top just to stall some time. I think that was well worth it at the end. But with this, Tempest really has to push far because right now they have the pressure. and They are leading in numbers, so... And Soon they will be out rotated by Falstead if they give more time to the Tempest, to Mighty. So they're really using this time to just push all lanes right now. Yeah, that's the idea here, and it's just going to force Mighty to play a little bit more defensively. They didn't get the Bell Tower. It would have been amazing if Tempest could have done that. That would have been 
I feel like would have actually made it. Ooh, hide it. is caught alone on the spite. Actually, just gonna walk out though. Slipperiest Malfurion I've ever seen. All the Korean players use Betrayer Malfurion for some reason. I guess it's cooler than just being regular Malfurion. It's that, <laughs> it's that like bad boy feeling, you know? Like, Ooh, I'm good, but I'm bad. As a support, yes. And Nasa gets taunted. That's Ooh, full that's damage coming out from Li Ming. Gets, yeah. Just palms himself at the very end. He has to self palm. He's using that alt key like you were talking about. For those who don't know what we're talking about, if you hold alt and use a spell, if it is an ability that can be used self cast, it will be self cast. Very useful for healers, but once you learn it, make sure you actually still remember to heal your teammates. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> okay, this is not going to be a steal. Tempest wanted to invade here. Or sorry, uh, Mighty wanted to protect the invade from Tempest. Sign with that protect with that parry. Soaking up so much damage. I, w I actually want to see this. Check the number, how much damage he has soaked up by himself. That guarantees them the bell tower, actually. And look at this lockdown with the assist on the other side of the houses. How does it work? How can you shoot magic missiles through the houses? <laughs> actually, not finishing this. A little bit scared seeing the Falstad coming over. Duck Duck is going to get ganked. Meanwhile, down here in the bot lane, he escapes. Misses the root, does hide, sadly. Oh, knocks him into it with a grenade! Duck Duck almost got that pick with a grenade, and now Mighty's fighting outnumbered down here. Sans is gonna get picked off. It just feels like Mighty is taking fights needlessly that they don't need to. They committed so many resources for the Duck Duck gank. That didn't work for them either. Here's the taunt. It's gonna help finish off SDE. There's the palm. It's gonna do so much damage afterwards, actually. And look at this, coming back in is Murden. And Hyde is gonna be the next to fall. Duck Duck wants to get the kill on the SDE. I'm not entirely sure why he went so far in. And, uh, what am I watching? Sign is like also trying to 1v4. It is sadly not going to work. He is going to find himself DED dead. This is a double protection. Ooh, he gets the slow. Joker Storm Ball is going to hit it. He yes. hits it. <laughs> Seems like he had enough mana. Maybe not enough for Dwarf Toss. Over, but does that does get the kill very end? I think that palm in the middle was the turning point for Mighty. they should have retreated at that moment and they decided to continue fighting. And SD was like, You know, I'm Nazebo, right? <laughs> now he's got 16, now he's got cooldown reduction for the spires. So it looks like it's going to be the double bell tower retake here. So Mighty will actually go five to three. I think it's also because they saw palm onto Kerasim himself. Maybe they didn't know they didn't know that cooldown was already back on the control. If they got the kill, they if the palm didn't connect. Leeming could have got the lead reset. I, it, I think it would be the opposite of what we just Sure, saw. absolutely. But I, I feel like once the palm goes down, you have to just concede the point and walk out and reset it for another fight. Sign going back in there was completely unnecessary. That actually despawned him. So you obviously, uh, you know, when you lose a team fight, you would love everyone to die at the same time so that you could all come back together. But Varian was dead late. So even though the majority of Tapas came back, he was not there. So. In this numbers advantage, Mighty gets both Bell Towers nearly. The top one is like at 5% health or so. They retake the bottom one, they can take that top one soon because they have Falstad. And we're getting to that point of the game where now the cooldown reduction for the Spiders at 16 is available for the Zebo. Getting closer and closer to Vial Infection, getting tankier. A little bit scary now for Tempest as their comp does not do as well in the late game. They don't really have any heroes that scale into that. Uh, at right. all. And Mighty still has Falstad pushing the top, and I believe the top bell tower is very damaged. Even maybe with the three th three sappers on top, I think Falstad will be able to take that bell tower. You know what? I would even like to see Temporal Flux in this case for really being at 20 because they're just having a lot of trouble locking down these heroes, especially Sans. Avatar going to be popped here in this fight. Spider damage coming out already. Here comes a potential gust. Magi comes in for the side. Does he get the angle he wants, though? This is actually a lot of damage. If Mighty gets this, it's five. It's basically a third of what Tempest has left on their core, so this is an important fight for them to take. Looks like they're actually just going to look for the pick onto Sands down here at the bottom. A great palm. Nasan was a bit late earlier to get here, but <laughs> still gets the palm off, and now this fight is once again going to be turned by the palm alone. Sanctification used here against Sans. He's actually going to be left alone here as the gust comes down. They want to look for the re-engage without him, though. SDE, look at how much damage he can put off in this fight. For most of the cooldowns are used, he is just going to sit back and toss spiders. Look at this damage he's about to put off. He can get in range. So much damage done to Hyde. Hyde is actually nearly going to die from this. 
They lost they lost Lockdown from the beginning of the fight. Nasan, what a great player, just going all in with those hundred fists, just targeting Leeming alone. He took that he took that took that kill by himself. There's a great grenade to actually cancel. I just don't think this is realistic to fight right now with SDE being so healthy. Look at all that spire damage on a modern life. Even though he has that spell damage built in, he still just takes so much. Karazim goes up and taps onto the fountain. They only need maybe 20 more seconds and soak in both lanes to hit 20. They're very close. They All they have to do is literally just stall time because they also have the bell tower on top pushing. They want this so badly right now. Taunt being used on the Joker. Nasong is going to commit for the delay onto Hyde. Holy Ground kind of annoying here, but SDE is so far unpressured in this fight. His positioning is just so conservative. He's so good at the Dezebo and just tossing in the spiders again. Joker buying so much time. Here's the gust for the isolation. So much damage. Look at this body blocking as well. So that the beam does more damage. Sands killing it right now. And Tempest is going to lose this fight completely. Mighty now has the 20. Violet Infection looks like it's not actually finished quite yet. But uh, Modern Life will have to Aldruins away. This is going to be boss take. And that will put them two health away from finishing off the core. And Tempest, they know that they're going to go for the top top zephyrs as soon as possible. So Tychus is already on the, to the bell tower that on that's on their side. They will get take this down as fast as possible. But they only need two. Two more score onto that core. It's actually Tychus gets caught. It's a lot of damage there. Even Spiders trying to finish him off. So this bell tower now completely controlled. They're just going to defend it and try to escort. If they can get two of the three in, they win the game. I don't think it'll happen because Hyde has root mm -hmm. to stop this. But if he gets picked or if he messes up the root, this certainly could be game ending. That's what Mighty wants here. Balsat does have gust available, so he can just gust all of them away for the sappers to go in. Okay, the there it the is. Gust. Modern Life that? committing the sanctification even. Looks like it's going to be two of them go in, I believe. Am I, did I miss that? Just one, just one of them went in. Okay, just the one. Palm does connect. Uh, Tibio already dead. Lockdown's gonna get a reset. Lockdown gets a reset, but he can't continue to follow up. This bell tower is still controlled by Mighty, so he can't actually go for the chase. He does get temporal flux at 20, which is uh, it's always a little bit frustrating when you do this because you lose the damage that you would get from Talraj, but. I think it's just necessary in this case. And you also get slow onto the Zebo who's trying to escape all the other time. Yeah. So they will defend at least half of those shots that they uh, needed to defend to survive. So one left. One health left. Mighty can win this game with any altar, any boss take, or any escort of the Pumpkin Man. Tempest is looking to stop this from happening. They want to take the fight <laughs> with the numbers of edge they have. It's a 4v3 right now. They're just going to completely clear this first and get the channel. Luckily for them, it's a solo altar. It would not have been so lucky if it were a two altar phase. We have seen comebacks like this on this map. It is absolutely possible that Tempest could defend everything. It's going to get a lot tougher, though. And the scaling for Vile Infection now in play. Very terrifying. The damage the SD can put off, and there's just so much protection for him. And Joker is playing a great Malfurion. and he's known for his ETC, or sorry, Muradin. He's known for his ETC play, but today and yesterday, his Muradin has been on point. I think it's just really giving Tempest a hard time as they can't deal with SD. So many cooldowns used on Joker in the front line, and then SD comes in while they're on cooldown. We're going to see this commitment again once to the Joker. Palm is ignored. That will give a lot more, less stress, less pressure to Leeming, who's looking for that reset. Did not get uh, repost either, so not going to have that off for a long time. 45 more seconds. Joker does have second win, though, to heal himself up. Is they're going to go for him again? Actually has to use his stone form healing to survive. Close and Beam is on Duck Duck for the moment. They, are they going to go for the chase? False that did not. Did not take Epic Man, went for the Nexus Frenzy. They wanted to fight even more. They wanted to bring a little bit more damage, as, as much as damage as possible. Well, they know that if Tempest is going to win this game, it's, we're going to go super late. And that means that he's going to have even more power from his Season Marksman, which continues to stack up over and over and over again for the auto attack damage. He already has the speed uh, attack speed buff. 
have played that a long time ago. He's just soaking right now. And this is just a good situation for Mighty all around because the scaling is always going to be in their favor no matter what. And even if they lose this Bell Tower, it doesn't matter because any altar for them will still end the game. In fact, they don't even lose it. It's like so low. So they... Instead of instead of straight straight up fighting, they wanted to go around and have Falstad rotating up the top. Try to get the Bell Tower on top, but it's going to be Karazim gone already. Silence there. Very good Twilight Dream coming out from Hyde. Sansa's going to die as well. This is definitely going to be a one uh, altar phase for Tabis. The split push in the top lane will kill another Bell Tower. So they're not going to be able to get as much damage as they would have liked. It's still just going to be the four, it looks like. Joker wants to turn this fight around. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Down he goes. Definitely did a lot of damage there, but SDE is coming over. It's still, it, they're just vastly outnumbered. This is an ill-fated attack. Sign coming around from the right end. Does have taunt in 0.5 seconds. That's going to be a kill for sure. There's no way up out of there. Yeah, he's doing a ton of damage anyways because Nazebo is so strong. They don't, oh, even, don't, they don't even channel because they want to push want as much as possible before doing the channel. This is why I'm surprised Mighty continued to be so aggressive because now they could lose uh, double bell towers and then they have less of a timer. They had such a large buffer with the 16 to 1, but when you get team wiped like this and Tepes makes all the right choices, then you're really playing with fire in terms of um, what you what map control will be taken away from you because now Tepes is going to weaken that buffer, will have the advantage when they channel, Looks like actually they're not going to. It looks like they're gonna wait for Li Ming to finish that. Nope, they don't even wait. They're a little bit impatient there. Could have actually had one extra damage. That was kind of a weird choice. Gonna go for the boss now as well. Without epic mount for Falstad either, he's just not as useful at zoning out bosses. For example, he could have tried to maybe steal the altar there in that moment while he was alive if he had epic mount, but because he does not, less of an opportunity. Might just gonna let this go too. And the comeback is happening, man. I mean, it's. Now a game that Tebas realistically looks to win. If Mighty just keeps uh, taking these bad fights, seems like they just suddenly don't care in this game. I know that SD is a good Nzeebo player, and Nzeebo is real strong, but trying to take that fight was just unrealistic earlier. This gives Tebas so much room to work with. Now they only need two altars to win the game. If they win the fight on the double altar spawn, they just win it. And all that lead that Mighty had will just be washed away in an instant. But it is still the same. Mighty just need one sapper in. There's one damage as they're gonna try to pick off the sign as he is protecting himself. And there's Duck Duck for the save. <laughs> he, he actually just, survives that with uh, all the protection. I also just literally stood there because that's that's just uh, cool. Guys don't look at explosions, but it's gonna be an altar stolen here. There's pumpkin men coming with this as well. Hyde cannot die here. He needs to root. Sanctification going up. They need to clear all of these, and they will. Close call there. So, the scary moment. Can't believe Sign lived through all that. Some good parry usage there, but that was nasty. That was nasty. Now and they have to defend comes, both. Here comes, and Tempest really has to use this time to take the spell tower. I don't think it's going to. It's going to be very close. They need to do their best. To I'm take not this even now. sure why they're trying to take this right now. The problem is if they try to defend both, and the push comes bot, and they don't have the bell tower, then they just lose to that. So they have to clear this first, or at least that's what they've decided to and do. I, I think watching the, after watching, they're going to pick on the Duck Duck, Duck for sure. Duck Duck actually fairly safe, makes it out. And there's the Gust. They, the they channel. just want to secure the Not channel. Song is going to channel it's gonna here. Be, it's going to be game. And there they do finally get it after a hard fought mid game there. And Mighty definitely had some questionable fights, but Felt like they were playing with their food a little bit as eventually they did take the win there. With the double altar spawn, that's such a problem for Tempest. And Mighty starts things off with a win. I think it's partially due to the fact that they had the global presence of Falstad as well 